guys. It's Friday afternoon. Um, I snuck over here a little bit after the day job uh, to try and get a few things wrapped up on Jacob Z. Uh, it's just been a busy week in the shop and while we've been making progress, I'm not quite where I wanted to be. So when we kind of test fit the seat, uh, it seemed like it was a little bit high. So before we got uh, too carried away, uh, I wanted Jacob to come over and um, get in the car with the seat to make sure he was okay with it and he said uh, that was fine so we'll wrap that up tomorrow so while we were waiting we put the car up in the air and uh, I didn't show him why they were off but he has these uh, subframe connectors which connect here up into the back and uh, we got things cleaned up and welded as good as we could we did uh, like a three inch stitch weld every six inches on either side and those carry up to the front here. And then uh, this area is gonna get plated and then the footwell area is gonna get plated and there will be a bar that attaches kind of to the back side of this rocker panel to the radius rod. Jacob said the floor pans had been replaced at one point and you could kind of tell these were kind of a pain in the butt to, to get pushed up and uh, sit flat and then if anybody has ever uh, stitch welded a chassis before especially a unibody where uh, stuff is um, spot welded with seam sealer it doesn't matter how much grinding and wire wheels um, you put to the seams the stuff just freaking pops and does everything so I'd say I'm pretty happy with how it turned out you can kind of see up in the uh, engine bay up there we got the plates on there. We got the plates right here. I got to do a little welding here and uh, here, get that cleaned up. Same scenario, welds are decent. They're not amazing, uh, but between all the poor 15 that's on this chassis, even if trying to strip it, the, the steel's thin enough to where I've been having an issue with it uh, actually pulling through the, the other side and um, popping on me, so. Reinforcement, as you can see down here um, on both sides, uh, which goes kind of to the back side of the rocker panel, uh, floorboard to the back side of the radius rod. Um, and we got that done on both sides. And then what we were working on tonight, uh, the other day, I got these uh, pieces on the strut towers fitted down here. We still have to clean up the welds a little bit. Um, but we got the uh, reinforcements um, put together. We put um, like a 15 degree bend in these. What they were doing on the other cars was notching out the fender wells. I didn't think that that was gonna be very clean. Um, so we fit these up um, and they sit nice and tight um, against the strut tower. They sit nice and tight against the frame rail and they also touch the, uh, the fender well. Weld around here, weld around the bottom. And uh, so it keeps everything nice and condensed inside of the engine bay um, and does its job, but we don't have to butcher the fender wells, which I really didn't want to do. Another thing that we got finished um, is we have the driver's side um, seat mounts all complete. So tomorrow I'll get this tacked in. Kind of like we talked about, we welded nuts into the inside of the tubes. Uh, so it's a pretty simple installation with just running your bolts down through the top of the sliders. Uh, we'll get these tacked into the car so that we uh, have the seat position where we need it. And tomorrow uh, we'll actually get some footage of us designing the uh, cage with the Bentec software, which will be kind of the next big step. So we have to get the passenger brackets um, fabbed up and put into the car. Um, the one thing when we were trying to clean up some of the welds underneath, Jacob used 3 16 material for the transmission bracket, um, which is good, nice and sturdy, but uh, the tunnel might be 20 gauge. Um, and so he had some concerns with that. And after we started playing with it, we did as well. So what we're gonna do is actually 
getting here inside of the tunnel where the transmission bracket is mounted and uh, we're going to put a big plate on the inside just to reinforce everything come down on the floorboard a little bit um, to help distribute the uh, the load from the transmission through the chassis a little bit better and then go back up underneath the car and maybe clean up the welds just a little bit more but uh, it started just becoming um, pointless trying to do anything underneath the car just because it's so thin so um, that's something that we'll be working on tomorrow, but uh, we're getting close to the home stretch We've got a few more things to weld up as far as chassis reinforcement on the outside, but uh, Tomorrow we're going to start focusing um, back on the interior of the car getting the seat mounted um, getting the the cage designed um, getting the mounting plates for that located and welded in um, and then hopefully by this weekend we'll have some pipe bent for the cage and get this thing welded up and get it back over to Jacob's house Hey guys, I know that uh, I've brought up the uh, software Bentec a few times throughout this uh, series for Jacob's car and we're kind of to the point where uh, uh, we're actually have the main hoop cut and ready to go. And so this is essentially what the software is. It's um, basic 3D modeling software. Uh, depending on what version you get, it actually can get halfway advanced because you can sync this up with SolidWorks and import and export in and out of other models. So if you're, you know, putting a chassis together and you need to uh, check design or stress test stuff or incorporate whatever, um, you can design it in uh, SolidWorks, import it into Bentec, which will then uh, calibrate the, the shapes to your bender uh, or vice versa. So um, what I did here is I just put together a custom 3D part based off the dimensions that we took out of the 240. Uh, and what it essentially does is um, the software is calibrated to the bender. Um, you do a couple test bends, uh, import the stretch, the bend back or spring back, uh, things like that, and it'll kind of tell you how you have to bend it to get the shape that you want. Um, so we put a simple thing together, and then basically what it gives you is it gives you the start of your bend points. And so if you look at the pipe, there's a one lined up at the start of the bend inside of there it's probably hard to see but then you have bend two and then bend three and then you just walk this into the uh the pipe bender as you're going we also um pre-mitered the ends of the pipe which will just speed up the fitting time once we get it into the actual car so 
that's how the system works. This is a really basic, simple piece, but um, it makes your life a lot easier. And if you're gonna say, put together an entire cage, you can actually build it inside of Bentec, um, pre-bend everything before you actually go and fit it. So it, uh, it's a, a handy little tool to have if you do a lot of work like this. So we'll get to bending it so we can get it fit into uh, Jacob's car. about done with Jacob's car. Uh, I finished the roll cage not two or three minutes ago. Everything is all TIG welded. Um, got the stubs cut, got the caps on. About all we have left to do is we actually have, we have the passenger seat bars cut. Kyle is actually inside um, making the reinforcement plates for the transmission tunnel right now. Um, once we get those cut, um, to fit correctly, we'll get those welded in. We'll get the passenger seat um, bars put in, and that's a wrap on Jacob's car. We're gonna do a quick recap video. We actually just finished up the majority of the work on Jacob's car, and so we'll kind of walk you through um, what we've been doing on it the last couple weeks. Uh, to start, um, the car is obviously not up in the air, but. Uh, we did full subframe reinforcement. He provided us with some uh, frame rails that um, were prefabricated, pre-bent. Um, we pretty much had to trim to fit. Strip the factory frame rails of the paint or the pour 15, I believe that he had on there. Um, push those things up. We did a two on 12 stitch weld from front to back. And so that basically ties your rear subframe all the way up uh, to the front, kind of, they, they kind of deadhead right where the front radius rods are. 
So we did that also on the front of the car. Put the reinforcement bars on. Um, if you remember back to the first video that uh, Jacob posted, he kind of showed some of the old ISMA race cars. And so there's a reinforcement that goes from the rocker panel over to the, the back side of the radius rod. That's done on both sides. Then in the engine bay, um, we added these uh, strut tower reinforcements. So the strut tower itself is plated. The frame rail down inside is plated. And then we uh, added the, uh, the bar. So that's kind of what we did on the outside um, as far as uh, chassis reinforcement. Then on the inside of the car, uh, he provided us with one of the two seats that he's gonna be running, um, but he needed a way to mount them in. So we made these seat mounts here and we're gonna keep them tacked in for now. Uh, that way it gives him a little bit of flexibility on whether or not he wants to move the seats or um, there's even some slight discussion he might go with a different seat. We're not sure, but uh, we made the seat mounts to fit inside of there. There's captive nuts inside of the tubes, so all he has to do is run the hardware down through the seat uh, into the, the rail itself. Uh, the other thing we did while we're here is we reinforced the transmission tunnel. Um, that transmission tunnel is extremely thin, uh, like I've said before, and uh, I was really worried that even though the bracket that Jacob made for the transmission mount was really solid, um, we wanted to do a little bit more to help him out, and so we essentially made a sandwich plate, and so what you're seeing right there is also uh, the same condition on the other side of the transmission tunnel and basically what it does is you have Jacob's um, Brackets that he made up underneath the transmission You have the actual transmission tunnel and then we have a plate on the outside And then they're all welded together and what that does is it just kind of sandwiches all of that together to, to make the connection a little bit stronger in the transmission um, tunnel itself so onto the roll cage uh, it's actually a roll bar um, we used inch and three quarter DOM. Uh, <clears throat> the base mounts are on top of the wheel wells, but uh, they're reinforced um, as well and plated. Um, they come back on top of the uh, rear strut tower, uh, which was reinforced back up underneath here. Uh, and then we put this little stub up so that we could kind of have a cleaner transition into the top of that plate uh, so it wasn't so um, such a steep miter on that tube uh, a little bit cleaner a little bit stronger adds some rigidity to the the whole structure itself um, we put a harness bar in it um, it's slightly set back just so that um, Jacob can have as much leg room as possible he's a pretty tall guy and this is a small chassis so what this does is it allows uh, the seat to be pushed back as far as possible. You have clearance still up here. You're not gonna really hit your head. Um, what this does, the bar is set up to where when it's in the reclined position where he's gonna be sitting, it kind of gives you that 10 to 15 degree pitch on the harness down over the top of the shoulders. So it, it holds you back into the seat and um, rather than pushing you down um, into the lower bolster. So yeah, uh, really happy how it all turned out. Um, it'll be cool to see what Jacob does with the car once he gets back to his shop. Um, I think the next step for him is pulling the engine and uh, making some serious horsepower. So yeah, it was a lot of fun to work on it. Um, slight teaser, I know that a few of the guys uh, on the last video were asking about the E30. Um, this is my own personal project and uh, You'll probably see a lot more if you tune into my channel. Uh, I've been working on this for five years, but it's about time we got it finished. So uh, we got some crazy plans for it coming up over the winter. So if you uh, want to tune in, uh, check out my channel, Rebellion Forge. Uh, we'll be putting out a lot of videos probably starting here in December going through the winter. Uh, pretty much going to take it all apart again for the third or fourth time anybody that knows me so uh this should be a lot of fun but uh thanks for watching the videos guys uh, it was a lot of fun to work on jacob's car and uh hope we get to work on some more projects again in the future see ya